my friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Tammy Ernest and I am a long arm quilter. And here on my channel, I normally share customer finishes as well as my own projects. But I occasionally share um, floss tube and that's what we're doing today. So this is my third floss tube video and I have um, some finishes to show you this week, some progress to show you um, on my cross stitch things. And then I have um, some special things at the end, show you some projects that um, my 20 something daughters have finished and um, they don't have their own floss tube channels and so I think I'll share some of theirs. I think you'll be impressed with some of the things that they've done too. So let's get started. So first of all I have um, a framed finish. What do they call that? An F F F O fully finished project? I don't know. So I showed um, last time that I had found a project that I had finished um, many years ago. I don't I don't even know uh, how long ago it's been that I finished. I mean within the last I don't know. I can't even guess. It was early on in kids so my kids are all in their um, early 20s now so I might have done this when they were young. Um, so it's probably 10-15 years old but I found it um, not framed in some of my things and decided to go ahead and get it framed. So this is done on Ada. I did not bring the pattern with me, but this is from uh, Paula Vaughn's, one of Paula Vaughn's books, and this is like uh, quilts throughout the year. So the book contains all 12 months, and this is the October block, I believe. Not block, the October picture, you can tell I'm a quilter, I <laughs> talk in blocks. Um, but it's done on an Ada, what I would assume is like um, I don't know if it's a 14, it may be a 14, 14 or 16 count. It's it's um, fairly large and kind of like an oatmeal type color. Um, but what I love about these pieces is obviously the quilt blocks because I'm a quilter at heart. And that's really when I stopped cross stitching back, you know, 10 or so years ago is when I started doing more and more quilting. And I am just loving now that the two can come together, you know, and, and uh, so a lot of my cross stitch pictures actually have quilting or quilts in them too. And uh, this is one of my favorites from the book because we used to have a pumpkin patch and we um, ran a you pick pumpkin patch here on our property at our farm for about 19 years until the kids all got, um, older and now they're all working and and it's too much for me to manage on my own but uh, growing pumpkins is one of our favorite things it wasn't a huge one I mean we would plant you know two 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 and a half acres of pumpkins every year um, and we would spend the month of October uh, with families coming out weekends were always busy um, enjoyed seeing families year after year and we would bake and that's actually uh, we would bake um, things made from our own pumpkins, so we would grow pie pumpkins as well. And if you're not familiar with pumpkins, pie pumpkins are a smaller variety, um, very fleshy. The um, the inside is a very thick wall, not like your normal jack-o'-lantern pumpkins, but a very thick wall and sweeter. And so we would um, cook those down and we would make pumpkin muffins and pumpkin bread um, pumpkin pie, and then we even expanded out to pecan pie and all different things. We'd make caramel corn and um, white bread and wheat bread, all those kind of things. So we would sell all of those too in our little shop. And that's actually where I got started selling my quilts too, is uh, I would sell quilts uh, in our little shop there and and uh, that's how the whole quilting side of the business got started. So I'm, I'm glad that that's continued on, even though we did have to shut down the pumpkin patch. But so back to what I was saying, my the pumpkins are um, hold a special place in our heart here at our, our farm. So that's a completed project. I just got the frame. This is a Hobby Lobby frame. I actually took this piece in. I was going to have them uh, frame it for me at Hobby Lobby. I don't know of any frame shops local to me. And so I was just gonna take it in and have them, and I thought, I'll just look at the frames real quick. And I walked in, and this, first of all, their frames were 50% off that day. And so I'm walking down through the frame aisle, and then I see that this one is even on clearance. And I left, I left the tag on, so you could see. This is originally a $24.99 frame. And so that day, if it was 50% off, it would have been half that, so $12.50 or something like that. But they had these tags on here. These are upside down. 
Can you see the price? $6.99. I got the frame for seven bucks. I mean, that's almost a fourth of the original cost, and I thought, I can't pass that up. So I actually bought this one and a couple others as well. I don't know what projects they're going to be for, but I thought, at prices like that, I can do my own. So you can see from the back, I just laced it. I'm not an expert in this at all. This is some um, crochet thread that my daughter had, and this is some foam core board that I had, and I just laced it. I will... Um, probably put a piece of fabric over this just to make it a little nicer. And uh, and this one, I'm, I'm one that decorates seasonally, so this will not stay out now, and not my intention anyway for it to stay out now. It'll be something that I'll pull out in the fall time uh, after Labor Day um, and put up from September through uh, November probably for those uh, three months, two and a half months there, and that'll be a decoration that we'll have out. So. Happy to have that one done. All right, and so my next one is um, finish that I had was this cross stitch collector. And this is a pattern that was put out in Nashville in 20, it says 2022. Um, I actually picked this up at the attic out in Arizona when my husband and I were out there last April. And so this was um, a Nashville exclusive kit that the attic had in their shop. And I appreciate so many of you <laughs> who um, commented last time to tell me that I had two eyes. Um, was it two eyes that I had? Two eyes in cross stitch. And so... I, I am so glad that you guys caught that and brought that to my attention. So what had happened is I had not finished across the top. So I did not have cross, I did not have that blue spool, I did not have the S, um, but I had from the back end of the word. So I had H and C and T, and then I had actually, then I had the I. So I had H, C, T, and the I. So I was working backwards across this word and I had gone over the correct amount of spaces for that next letter, for that letter T, but when I got to the top, I finished it like an I instead of like a T. So really all I had to do, I didn't even have to rip anything out. I just had to finish um, the, uh, what we call in our homeschool, the hat on the top. <laughs> we had to give the T a hat. And um, so I just had to finish that. And maybe that was, so maybe I really didn't mess it up. Maybe I just hadn't finished the I, it finished the T, so it did look like an I that day. But there's the entire finished piece. And this is all of the uh, called for colors except one. And I mentioned it last time, the middle of those O's and the, th um, the thread coming off of this spool here was supposed to have been this, um, a specialty thread an antique gold and I bought it and I um, used it let me show you it was supposed to have been this I didn't like the thickness I really I'm not a gold person even my wedding bands are are the white gold I'm just not a gold person so it didn't it didn't do anything for me so I replaced um, that that's actually DMC 3828 I think is what I chose um, that color right there. So DMC 3828. The rest of the called for colors I used. This dark one is actually Peacoat. It's a Weeks Dye, work, Dye Works and it's actually a blue. Um, if I had to realize that one, I mean, I could, I, to me it looks black when it's going to be finished. It looks black. I'm not a huge, I mean, I like dark blue. <laughs> Obviously, I'm wearing dark blue today. Um, so it works for me. But uh, I'm more of a black person. So I just have a couple buttons. There are a couple buttons that go in there. And how cute is that girl doing her own little cross stitch? Her hair is even... It called for that blue, that peacoat blue for her hair. Which I'm kind of surprised at. But, but it works from a distance. So you can tell I started this a little high on the piece of fabric. This was, um, the fabric was included in the kit. And so um, I didn't quite center it well enough. So I hope I can have enough room to, to finish it. So the kit came with, 
um, a board. So this is a pattern that's put out by the um, Primitive Hair, and isn't this cute? She's got her own wrapping, her own tissue paper. And um, so the board is included, and it's just a wooden board already painted black for me. And so I will need to mount this on some sort of foam core um, or mat board or something, and then it attaches to this. Um, so, uh, and then I'll be finished. So I, I mean, the more I do, I mean, I'm a little surprised that that's done in blue, especially with the board being black. Um, but it works. I'll be excited to finish this one. Hopefully by the next time we get together, I'll have that one done. So again, thank you. If you ever see mistakes that I've made on my stitching, please don't hesitate to tell me. I would much rather know it when I'm still at that stage than once it's framed and on the wall and I find and I notice it then. So no troubles at all. I so appreciate your help in accomplishing that one. So that is, um, again, Primitive Hair, Cross Stitch Collector, um, and I don't know if even this is still available because it was a Nashville kit. I doubt it is, um, but maybe somebody on Etsy or something has one. So really cute. I'll be uh, finishing that one up. Let me set this aside. The next one, let me, uh, I have one that is almost finished. Um, but not quite and I think I'll wait when I start my projects and I'll show you that one. So instead, let's move on to some um, Cross stitch haul that I've gotten into the mail Okay, I'm gonna scoot my chair over this way a little bit because the Sun is starting to move across and this side has a little bit of, of Sun Okay So let me show you a little bit of um, haul that I've gotten in so you, I've shown you in the past that I received these uh, Lori Holt readers in my sew sampler box and I have used, I, I usually would keep a pair of readers in each of my cross stitch bags, but when I received these in my uh, sew sampler box, I've actually started using these all the time. I rarely use all my others. I like the, the, um, the thickness of these, what I mean by the, the sturdiness, because sometimes the ones I've gotten from Walmart, you know, the paint starts peeling on them and they're just, they're not very sturdy. They are cheap, so that's why I get them. But I love the colors. I mean, to me, at my age, I'm just gonna enjoy fun, you know, so I love the colors. So I have used these a ton. And these are, let me tell you the, these are 2.5 strength. And so many of you told me when I was having trouble stitching on 40 count, and I actually gave up on 40 count, um, you told me to go to a higher reader, and so I did order a couple of new sets of Lori Holt readers, and I just love, I love just the fun, just the fun. So these are a green one, and this one is, this is a 5.0, so double the strength of those, but a pretty green, it actually is looking kind of blue on there, but let me compare it to the other one. You can see the difference because these actually are blue and there's more of a difference than it shows in that these are a, more of an um, I would say a sage green Lori Holtz green okay it's not showing that way on this and these are more of a blue so 2.5 and then these are the 5.0 I have started using these a little bit but because I gave up on my uh, 40 count linen I haven't needed these as much because I can do okay on 36 count even with the two and a half. Um, I also got a pair of four, four strength. Now this is a pink um, case, but these are blue again with the gingham. So more, a little more of a royal blue. And these I believe are 4.0, yeah. And I've used these already with my 36 count and they've worked really well. Um, I don't use them all the time because my problem is when I put them on, um, I can't look, I can only pay attention to my sewing because <laughs> I can't see anything beyond my sewing. So if somebody else is in the room with me, I can't even, I have to talk to them over the top of it. So if I can get by with a two and a half, two point five 2.5 readers, I usually use those. I'm gonna have to pull my 40 count out, 40 count linen out again and try um, using these because they're gonna help. I know they already have helped. Um, but now I think I could probably do a little bit better on that 40 count. I'm not going to start that project over 
on the 40 count that I bailed out on, I'll probably just start a different project using um, the 40 count linen with the higher readers and try that. So thank you for your suggestion. I'm excited to use these. The new readers, they come in such pretty colors. I'll link these down below if you're interested in, in them. I just, I, I like, I like the Lori Hole readers. I've kind of bailed on all my others. Then also in the mail, I ordered a new piece of linen. I don't know what I'm gonna use this for. This was from a company, um, one of the companies that I have ordered quite a few, uh, quite a bit, um, but they were going out of business. And so I just grabbed a, um, this isn't even very big. This is a 12 by 17, 36 count, and this is Confederate gray. I just like the color. Just wanted to grab something while it was on sale before she went out of business. So I don't know what I'll use it on, but I just, I like the color of it and just grabbed it to have on hand just to build my stash up a little bit. And like I said, I won't even tell you the company name because um, she was closing her shop, but I did grab that piece. The other thing I received in the mail, if you follow me on my quilting videos, then you saw this. I ordered um, a set of, um, this is the Threads That Bind by Blackbird Designs. This is a set of their fabric. And this was a package on Fat Quarter Shop. And I, again, will link this below. So it has this blue, it has um, this wine color, it has a taupe. Let me do it on the side. It has the taupe with the, the red and the blue. It has the taupe with just the blue. And here's a mulberry color. And then here is a taupe on taupe. And this was all together in a package from Fat Quarter Shop. What I wanna do with this is make some, um, some project bags because I usually, I've said in the past, I usually like to match my bags to my project. And I am doing, um, one of mine is a Saturday, I always do it on Saturdays, it's my sampler and these, uh, our sampler fabric so I want to make a bag that's just for my Saturday sampler and let me see um, they're a yard almost a yard right out a yard and so one two three four five six yards of fabric and it was um, put together in a package deal and it was on sale when I got it so I was super excited about that. Can't wait to make a project bag. Uh, this will make a couple, obviously. Um, I just thought this was so cute. So I'll link that down below if it's still available. I don't know if it was on sale because um, you know they were trying to phase it out or something. And it's been a month or so that I've had this, but so cute, so cute. Love, love, love that. All right, so let's get into my projects. So the first one um, that I have is um, I've been working on this one quite a bit um, because I'm so close to finishing it. When we did our trip to um, Wisconsin back almost a month ago now, and it was a five hour drive up, five hour drive back. We did it over a couple day time just to visit a school that my uh, son will be attending in the fall. And so I took this one with me because I had some fill in work that I could do in the car. I don't normally do cross stitching in the car at least on on local trips because I find that um, I, the car bounces too much and I, can't, I I get frustrated that I can't get the needle in the hole that I want it to. But I have found that we're on longer trips when we're on the interstate, it's usually a smoother road and I can do, I can do cross stitch. So I did take this in the car when we were driving those five hours and I did work on it quite a bit. And then it was also a project I could work on in the hotel room at night um, before we went to bed. So this one is, I'll show you the picture. This is Plum Street Samplers and this is their Peace, Love, and Purpose one. I love this. And so I am working on a piece of 36 count. And this is Platinum Linen by Zweigart. And let me show you where I'm at. I am almost there. So on the trip, I finished all the fill in down at the bottom, all that blue all around those flowers. And um, recently, 
Then over the weekend, we also had another, oh, about an hour trip away, and I did take this with me on that too, and I filled in all the white on the house when we were on that trip. So the only thing I have left, I have a little bit at the very end of the flag. There is a bird that sits on top of the house between the two chimneys. And then um, this vine that comes up the flagpole actually goes off um, horizontal above uh, the couple's head with the, with uh, 1776. So it's very, um, very close to being finished. Let me show you the picture again. So I just have this vine here. I have the 1776. Um, the bird that's sitting on the roof, and then just the very tip of the of the flag. Oh, and I do have these words down here at the bottom. The peace, love, and purpose words down there at the bottom. So very, very, very close. Um, really cute. This will be fun to have finished um, for Memorial Day. Not that this necessarily has to be a patriotic piece. Um, uh, I used to, one of our rooms used to be an all patriotic room, the, our mud room when you first walked into the house, and then we painted it a few years ago and I didn't do that, but uh, I don't have a problem with putting uh, Americana pieces out all year long. So again, you can see the quilt blocks on houses and quilt blocks. Um, I have a theme. <laughs> I do a lot of houses and quilt blocks in my cross stitch. So that one is almost almost finished and hopefully by the next time we get together I will have that one completed and later on in my video I'll show you what I'm going to replace um, projects with that I'm finishing up what I have pulled out to do next Sorry about that. then the one, next one I have on the stack here I'm just working through my stack there wasn't any rhyme or reason to it um, I do a morning stitch and uh, so in the morning when I First, get up. I listen to my, uh, the Bible uh, in my earbuds from an app on my phone, and so I do one stitch each morning. And I'm working on this um, from this book, Quakers and Quilts. This is a Rosewood Manor, yeah, Rosewood Manor. So on this one, I'm not doing this complete piece. Um, I'm not doing this down here at the bottom. And here's a picture on a darker fabric, but that's what I'm doing. That's the part. And I'm also doing it in one color. Um, I like the black and that's what I do. Um, if I'm doing a one color piece, so far that's all I've done. I don't do a red or blue or green. I'm using the black uh, because we live in an old farmhouse and I like the modern farmhouse look. I like the black part. So let me show you how far I am on this one. So I think last time I had everything above the line done. So this time I have um, the first one of those motifs done. And actually, I really enjoyed it. I love the look of that. I enjoy doing letters uh, and numbers and sampler type things and little motifs, but I really liked this one, especially in the one color um, that I, I really like that. It was a lot of fun to work on. And so I have, I think, four more. One, two, three, four, five more to go across um, underneath there. And they, I, honestly, I haven't had a ton of time to work on this. Um, my morning times have been a little rushed. And so instead of actually stitching, I've spent some time just reading. And uh, so I haven't done this every day. So, but the part I have done, I've really enjoyed. So hopefully this next month or so I'll get some more done on that. This fabric, let me see if I have it written down. This is stitched on 32 count uh, lamb's wool. And um, this is a stiffer fabric. And um, Kimberly Jolly of the Fat Quarter Shop just did a video I believe it was earlier this month, I just watched it the other day, where she talks about the difference um, in linens. Now she's done some other videos. She did one on Ada, and then she did one on Even Weave, and this last one she did was on linens. And I learned a ton. 
I tell you, when I got back into cross stitching, I had always just stitched on Ada. And so coming back in, I'm just grabbing this fa fabric, that fabric. I really didn't understand the difference at all. And I was always frustrated with this piece of linen because it was so, um, it was just stiff. And now after watching her video, I understand why. This one is from one of the big makers. It has not been over dyed. It has not been, um, dyed, washed, and, and dried again af, uh, through the dyeing process. So it makes so much more sense. I, under, <laughs> I understand why this is stiff and why my others are soft. And um, so I guess what I could have done, I could have washed and dried this at the beginning and then it would have been a lot softer to, to work on. This is 32 count, which is a little big from what I normally do. My favorite is 36 count, so this is a little bit bigger. So even if it would have um, shrunk a little through the washing process and drying process it still would have been fine for me so if you have not watched that video you need to to go watch it I learned so much about linens and the difference and the makers and um, really really enjoyed a lot of good information so again that is Quakers and Quilts this is Rosewood Manor this is actually um, fairly local to me Carmel Indiana it's about an hour. Actually, I was near. I was in Carmel this past weekend, so it's it's one of those places. It's about an hour away, but we visit quite frequently. We we're up there. All right, put this one away. Then the next one I've been working on. Um, so my current rotation is I am trying to work on smalls the first about the first week of the month. Um, I start on the 1st and I stitch through the 8th and I do smalls and so I have been um, trying to work on these and this came out in market last year and I have two of them completed now. I've not taken them off the fabric. I'm waiting till I get all of them done and then, um, or that was my plan anyway. <laughs> Once I get them all done, I'll take them off the fabric and or stitch, you know, cut them apart and, um, and make them into pillows is my plan. And I did recently when we were at an antique store, I found a couple of old pin cushions, the tomato pin cushions. They're not the easiest to find, to be honest. I'm assuming because they're either people don't, um, they think, oh, this is just, you know, an old pin cushion and they don't resell them or, um, it's probably one of those things that disintegrates pretty easily. So, but I was so excited. I did find a couple of new, new to me, uh, old pin cushions with some of them still the pins. I didn't bring those with me today to show you, but, but that, um, I'm trying to get a little collection of them so that I can make a, um, put them all together with these pillows once I get it done. So this fabric, hmm. I try to write it down, but I don't know if I even see where that's at. Oh, I think I know. Yes, this is 36 count vintage country mocha. Yes, okay. And so let me show you. So I have, um, I have this one done and this one done. So I'm trying to decide what to do next. I may come over here and do this, the lady. I kind of like her and it shouldn't take long I say that all the time. My time, I just have not had, um, I've been super busy with my long arming. And then in the evenings when I normally stitch, um, I've had a lot of bindings that I've been working on. And so bindings kind of take precedence because that's work. I don't do my binding work during the daytime because that's something I can do in the evening down with the family. But it does take away from my my cross stitch time. So it just, it just seems like this past month or so, um, I'm not complaining. I enjoy doing bindings as well. And that binding is something I can take in the car. And I do try to if I can. Because I can stitch. I don't have any trouble stitching those on, on even bumpy roads. Um, just been super busy lately. Like everybody. You know, it's what you make time for, I guess. Um, but anyway, I've stitched this from the 1st through the 8th. And so it shouldn't take too long to uh, do that. And then um, my current rotation, smalls first through the eighth, and then the ninth is our anniversary um, day. So I usually start on the ninth and I'll stitch something to do with family, um, something along those lines, either a, a couple piece or a family piece, something like that. 
and I'll show you what I'm doing on that one in just a minute. And then I do that from the 9th through the 17th. On the 18th is my birthday day, and so I start on something that's just fun for me. It's what I enjoy. So a lot of times that's houses. Um, if if the house, if I'm not currently working on a house piece in the family one, sometimes those kind of over overlap a little bit. And I work on that one from 18th to the 24th, and then starting the 25th because that is um, Christmas date, you know, but I use it for anything seasonal. So in the winter time or Christmas time, from the 25th to the end of the month, or if it's patriotic, if it's summertime or springtime, whatever, I do that from the 25th through the end of the month. But weekends are different. I do have a Saturday stitch. I call that one my Saturday sampler. And then I do have a Sunday stitch, and that's usually something that has Bible verse on it or, um, you know, something uh, related to, to church or to Christ or something in that way. So this is my current small one. So there are some months that just get busy if we've got something in the evening, especially now that it's getting a little nicer and it's lighter later. Um, I don't get as much time to stitch in the evening, and um, but I still, unless I'm trying to finish up a piece, like I am that piece love and purpose one, then I'll I'll stitch on smalls or whatever day of the month it is, and then um, no matter how much I got done, I go on to the next one. I mean, no hard and fast rules, but that's what I normally do. So that's my keeper of the pins. I did not, I ordered this from Market last year. I did not order anything from market this year um there wasn't anything that just wowed me i mean there were some cute things and um and i tried not to look really hard <laughs> but um, there wasn't anything that was just over the top that i had to get right away and because i had so many other things going at the time i didn't i just i held off i had some self-control and i'm really proud of myself um so anyway that's my keeper of the pins from last last year then the next project is actually on the same piece of fabric. It's just on the opposite end. And this is my family piece for right now. Let me show you the book first. This also came from Market last year. This is Teresa Kogut's Let Love Rain. And I am doing the piece that's on the back. And I have not um, worked on this for very long because I finished up um, another family piece. I have it over there on the wall but I can't think of the name of it right now. Anyway, you can go back to my last floss tube and you can see my finish on that one. But I replaced my family stitch with this one and really like this one, so cute. So I'll show you my progress so far, not a ton. I'm still working on the very top corner, the basket and the birds. And I didn't even go back to my last floss tube to see how much farther. I, I don't think I've made a whole lot of progress on this one, but that's where I'm at. And it's that same piece of vintage country mocha. Um, I just have it all on one piece right now. They're actually in the same bag right now. And um, so that's my progress on that one. All right, and then I told you I have a Saturday sampler. And so back in January, I started this um, pattern by the Scarlet House. This is Martha Evans. This is the one I started on 40 count and got just a short ways into it and said, I can't do this. And so I um, set that aside and actually started it all over on a 36 count. And and I'm stitching on Newcastle linen. This No, that was my 40 count. What is this one? Oh, I didn't write it down. My 36 count was on, or my 40 count was on Americana. Um, Newcastle, I learned from, the, from um, Kimberly's video, uh, when it's 40 count, and if I was said 40 count Newcastle, Newcastle means 40. It's the same thing. That's what they name their 40 count. And so this is, the color is actually Americana. Americano, Americano. But that's on my 40 count. My 36 count that I bought, I would have to look up. I didn't, don't have it in front of me um, what this color is. But I switched to the 36 count, and so far I'm liking this a whole lot better. So you can see I have a couple motifs done. I have that um, bird with the purple wing, the one next to it, a little white bird, and it's sitting on what looks like, I mean, it looks like a little king's crown, you know, like the whole royal crown that kind of, 
builds on top of itself. That's what it looks like to me. I don't know what it's actually. Maybe it's a maybe it's a bird cage. <laughs> and um, so I've done a little bit more on the border, and I started noticing. I I thought the whole border was the same all the way around, and the more I'm looking at it, it's not. There is one. Uh, so the first place I found it that it was not the same was on this motif here. There was one little stitch that came out at the end. And see how the others are flat and flat and flat and flat. And this one had one little stitch. Well, then I realized, well, it's on a whole V shape. It's not even flat across the bottom at all. And so then when I started looking at the pattern, most of the ones across the sides, it's the corners that are a tad bit, da bit different. And this is, um, you know, a remake of an antique sampler. So I'm, I don't know if the original uh, Martha Evans says she was age 12. Did she just come up with the border on her own? I am assuming so. I'm not a big uh, historian on when it comes to the samplers, but I just started noticing just some of the, and it's hard to see on this pattern if you were looking at it up close, but you can see like this one over here has a couple leaves and this one doesn't. Um, and there's a few things like that. I mean, the corners are just a tad bit different, which I'm sure if it was me, I would work down, you know, and then you make it, you make it fit. So, but I just noticed that when I was, because I was just tooling along on the border thinking it's all the same. Um, just looking back at the last, you know, the last one and then copying it to the next one. And I need to pay attention to the pattern a little better. Um, if I actually want it to make it just like this, because I want to, um, because not everyone is exactly the same. Very, very close, but uh, not everyone was exactly the same. So like you can even see down here on this little motif, there's a little flower that comes off of here. But over here on this one, there's not one. So just little differences like that. This up here does not have the little leaf tendrils underneath. These two on this side don't, um, but down here they do. So I just need to make sure that I'm paying attention when I am stitching this, not to just go off what's right next to it. And this one is uh, mirrored on both sides, so the birds that I've done on this side, I probably should have finished off the border and gone ahead and done the ones on this side since I have the, the thread already on my needle. So this is my Saturday, Saturday sampler. This is the um, sampler that I want to make the project bags for. Um, I think it would be really cute to house it in that. Let me show you my threads. These are all the called forwards. These are all DMCs. Um, there are, it, the pattern does list um, silks, um, but I chose not, I chose not. I chose just to do the DMCs. So that's all the colors of those. Muted colors, um, very cute. So a lot of fun to work on on Saturdays. All right, then I um, mentioned that usually from the 25th on, I'll do a seasonal piece. And so, so far I have been working on, let me pull out the pattern. I've been working on Jingle All The Way. To be honest, over the last month or so, I have not worked on it. We have had very little snow here in Indiana through the winter time. Um, February, I think, was record that we had no snow at all. March was a little cooler, but again, no, no record, no recordable snow. And so I have not felt like working on a winter piece. And um, Jingle All the Way, I know this is kind of, you could say it's Christmas. Yeah, to me, it, you know, more, it could just be winter. It could be out all the time through the winter, I mean. So I just, I have not worked on this and it's time to put this one away and um, to start working on some other seasonal pieces. So I don't think I've made any more progress since the last time. This is also on um, Vintage Country Mocha and that's where it's gonna stay until I pull it out uh, next year. So the barn's all done, the chickens are roosted in the top, um, the snow along the ground along the fence top on top of the tree and I'm ready to start that uh, next set of trees just above the fence line but that's where it's gonna stay 
until next year, not next year, until um, winter time anyway. And here are the threads for that one. I did all the called for ones. Some are classic. Most of them are classic. A couple shaker ones in there. I do think um, all the called for is except I changed um, eggshell to chalk because um, it was a little brighter white and on that vintage country mocha the brighter white showed up a little bit better than um, than the chalk. I thought maybe I had left chalk in here but I don't see it. Anyway, that white shows up a tad bit better. That was the brightest white that I could find. And so that one's gonna stay there. I'm not gonna do anything more on that until probably, um, probably not till December, unless I just, uh, something happens. I don't think so. But, all right, and then my Sunday stitch. I've been working on this one for a while. Um, this is this is the day. This is in my Sunday bag. Oh, threads. Um, this is in my Sunday bag. This is uh, this is the day by Plum Street. I do have the pattern. This one on a clipboard. I don't put all mine on a clipboard, but I had this one on a clipboard. So here's the pattern itself. This is the day, and I believe this was a market release uh, 2022 as well. So many people have finished it. It is such a pretty one. I'm taking my time because I only work on it on Sundays, um, usually Sunday evenings, not even Sunday during the day. Um, I usually am in my sewing room Sunday afternoons, and then we have uh, church again on Sunday evening. So on Sunday night when we come back home, we always have leftovers on Sunday evening. <laughs> Been doing that since I was a kid. Uh, you empty out the refrigerator on Sunday evening and and divvy up the leftovers. So we have leftovers. We usually we'll either play a game or we'll watch um, watch something on TV together. But that's when I stitch on this. And um, I've told you in the past I've had trouble lining up the house, and so I kind of have fudged and haven't done anything on the house. Instead, I've been. Um, going all around the house. I've skirted all the way around it. So I I didn't go back and see where I'd finished on the last floss tube, but I uh, went all the way down, finished that pot on this side, finished most of those flowers. I still have some fill in to do. Went across the bottom and did um, the line across the bottom and then started here on this side. So you can see the flower. And then you have um, what would you say, sheep or ram? What are they? Goat. Goat. You have the goats standing on top of each other. So I have those done, but without the other um, faces and other things around them, they're a little hard to see. So that's where I'm at on that one. I have not done anything else on the house. Some people have suggested starting at the bottom and working up and then just kind of fudging in the middle instead of having to fudge every, you know, all the way down, which I like that idea. Um, others are like, just go ahead and do it. Don't worry about taking it out. And I don't, I don't think I'll take it out. I'm just not ready to tackle it yet. I'm being a chicken. Um, just not ready to tackle it yet. But this is really fun right now in the springtime because it's just all the, around here anyway, everything's budding and flowering and our daffodils are out, our trees have got um, tiny leaves on them. We've got a beautiful crab apple tree that's about uh, these colors pink, that color pink or right now, just beautiful, beautiful right now. So this one's a lot of fun to work on. There's another ram right there at the top. I don't have him all done. You just see just his horns, <laughs> a little bit of his head. Um, but that's where I'm at on that one. So it'll be a while still, because I only work on it one day a week. But it's amazing how much you can get done, just little by little. Just keep working at it. And then here's all the threads. I'm, I'm using all the called for. Yep, I started this April of last year, so I've been working on it for one year. So really pretty. I like that one. A lot of fun to work on. 
All right, so with my peace, love, and purpose almost done, uh, as soon as I finish that up, I'll be able to replace that project with another one. And then because I'm putting my uh, jingle all the way away, <laughs> Then, so it's time to pull out a couple new starts, and I have not started on these yet. I will finish um, the Peace, Love, and Purpose first before I replace it. And then on the 25th of this month, when I start my, um, um, <laughs> when I start my seasonal stitch, I will be starting a new project. So let me show you what I picked out. So, So the Peace, Love, and Purpose has been, I've done that one from the 18th to the 24th. So it's like my birthday stitch. It's something that I like. And um, so to replace that one when I'm finished, I have chose, these are all ones that I have kitted in my stash. So I didn't go buy anything else. I just looked through my, my kits and um, the ones I already had kitted up and pulled from that. So I have chosen another Keeper of the Pens. This one is by Little House Needleworks. Um, where did I purchase this one? I purchased this um, from Persnickety Stitchers up in Zionsville, Indiana, and this was actually a kit that came with the pens. Sorry for the glare. Came with the pens that go in here also. So this one is um, a small the called for linen is a 32 count lamb's wool, which I do have on my Sunday stitch, and not on my on my daily stitch. I didn't pull that one. I actually. So this would make it even smaller. I need to decide because I actually pulled out a piece of 40 count. Um, this is 40 count Cafe Dule Cafe Ole by Zweigart. Um, also called sand. By doing it on 40 count, now that I'm understanding a little more better about linens, doing it on 40 count is gonna make it a lot smaller. So this is only a 79 by 79. So I'll need to put that in my calculator and figure out how big that's gonna be because I don't want it too small. And if this right here is done on 32 count, that would be a tiny, tiny pillow if I did it on 40 count. So I may change my mind on that and do this on the corner edge of my um, of my daily stitch because that's a 32 count lamb's wool. So all the called for colors, I don't have them on rings yet. Mm. No, you know what, in here this, um, I have these threads in there, in the bag, but those aren't the right threads because those are all DMCs and the pattern calls for all classic color works. So good thing I looked at that before I sat down to stitch on it because that is not, unless I did a conversion on it, I don't know, they look. I don't know, I'm not one that normally does conversions, just my own. I mean, I like the colors I picked, they're really pretty. And they look very similar. <laughs> um, hmm. Interesting. I don't know. I have to decide what to do there. I'll let you know. Um, they definitely could work, but those are not the ones that... Uh, I don't know why they're in this bag if, they, if I didn't mean them for this project. We'll see. Um, but that's the project I want to work on next. For, um, for my birthday week month of the month that I stitch. Then the other one I pulled out to go for my, um, that I wanna start for my seasonal stitch is this one called Liberty Lodge. And by seasonal, to me it looks sort of springish because it has the pink truck and the flowers um, it does have a flag on here and it is called Liberty Lodge. So that made me think of even Memorial Day and um, even into summer. But I love the big, it's a lodge. I love the big old house. I think that's really cute. And I have pulled, again, the called for colors. They are a mixture of DMCs, classic color works, 
uh, Weeks Dye Works, and I have all of those. I don't have it on a ring yet, but I have them all here. And here's one more. And the, the fabric I pulled out, I have a 36 count country mocha. I got this from Kitten Stitcher. It calls for 36 count heritage, so this would be the same um, size anyway. 116 by 84 is the size of it. All right, so you wanna see the threads on there? I like these colors. That would be the, the truck and those flowers. And uh, the lodge itself is done in, it's done in stepping stones, which is that one right there. So that's what the lodge is done in. I like the colors on this, on this fabric. That'll be nice. So I'll start that the 25th of this month for my seasonal stitch. And so those will be the things I'll be working on. So I have four projects that rotate throughout the month and then I have daily stitch and I have a Saturday stitch and I have a Sunday stitch. So eight projects total that are going on um, in the works that you know others I've put away but not being actively worked on. So I have eight that I am actively working on each month. So busy time. I enjoy, I enjoy cross stitching so much. So now what I would like to show you is some finishes by my daughter. Um, I have three daughters and one is married and out of the house. The next one is in her early 20s. She is a school teacher, still lives at home with us. She's not married, um, but she has done some cross stitch over the years and I thought you would be really excited to see some of her projects. She has some really cute things. So let me show you first of all, the first one, I asked her to pull the patterns for me so you could see um, this one she pulled out of a magazine and there is no date on here. This was in a Leisure Arts magazine. I have seen this pattern and I need to look for it. I know I saw it on Instagram or someplace. Somebody had done this pattern. So it may be a separate um, pattern at this time that you can buy and I will look for it to see if I can find it. Um, but this is called Blessed. It's, a, it's called Joy in the Journey. Blessed is the life that finds joy in the journey. And let me see if it says who the designer, she doesn't have the full article that it was in. So she has the pattern, she pulled the pattern and she pulled the picture of it, but she doesn't have the full article and I don't see, um, First name is Diane, but I don't see um, her last name. So maybe you know, or I'll start looking for it and I'll put it in the description. Um, and let me show you Emily's finish. It is behind glass. Um, this is a Hobby Lobby frame, but very, this is, um, a nicer finished wood than the one I showed you on mine. Mine was a little rougher of a wood. This is a very nicely finished wood with a, you know, then an inset in here. And she has it behind glass. So I'll try not to have a glare. Um, this is done on Ada, and I would guess um, probably a 16 count Ada, what it looks like to me. Doesn't Emily do nice work? Very, very nice. All of my girls have different, um, they haven't followed in the quilting yet. I, I think quilting is one of those things you do once you have a house of your own and things. Um, I've always started my girls on um, crafts of some sort. We're not ones that play video games or you know we do movies, but we don't just sit and watch TV all the time. I've always wanted my girls and my boys, they need to be busy on something, on a project of some kind. So the girls have all been... Um, done different crafts and Emily's she doesn't do as much cross stitch anymore she does it more in the winter time than in the summer sorry about that um more in the winter time than the summertime she's a big gardener as well so in the summertime she's outside but just a really really cute very very nice 
and she, um, I don't know, she maybe double stick tape or something around uh, the board and then inserted that in there. You can see the back of it. Like I said, this is a Hobby Lobby frame. You can find that there. Very nice. The next one that she finished, I think she told me this is just, uh, I won't say just, but this is a, uh, you can find this at a big box store. Um, and this was done um, on Ada. This says 14 count Ada. She also has this one framed and behind glass. So I'll try not to get a glare. Nice big piece. Um, let me see if it says the size nine by 12 on 14 count A to be nine by 12. Ooh, sorry about the glare. This is really pretty. Um, actually, I think it's much prettier than it actually appears on the package. Nice lighthouse, words. It's um, full coverage from there to there. Everything, everything is stitched. Um, no, I take that back. In between the um, the fencing here is not, but the sky is a complete stitch. The uh, the sand and everything. So the only place that is not complete stitched is the fence post there. So when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. Very pretty. The other pieces that she, oh, one more that is framed. So several years ago, she gave this piece to my husband and I for Christmas. So um, we have been married 32 years, and at our wedding, we had a song um, that was popular at the time called I Will Be Here, and it was a, um, written and put out by Stephen Curtis Chapman. He is a, a Christian songwriter. And so several years ago, Emily actually designed this herself. She um, charted it all in cursive nonetheless all of the words to the song um try to get as you can see it without a glare um so she charted this all all of the words to the song and every time it says i will be here like it's down the side it's done in red so try to get that in without the light being behind glass, it just makes it difficult if I do it straight on. So you're going to you're gonna see the ring light in the back, but hopefully you can see the words too. So it says, tomorrow morning, if you wake up and the sun does not appear, I will be here. If in the dark we lose sight of love, hold my hand and have no fear, uh, because I will be here. And then the chorus, I will be here when you feel like being quiet, when you need to speak your mind, I will listen and I will be here. When the laughter turns to crying, through the winning, losing, and trying, we'll be together because I will be here. And then it goes on. So this was this is a very special piece to us. And again, she knows that I like black and the dark. Um, this is done on Ada. What would be um, a dark, a darker, not brown. I would say a darker taupe. Um, and then the musical notes and the hearts. She just did a very nice, very nice job on this one. Probably an 11 by 17 frame or so. Just very special knowing that she, we, uh, we don't do it now because our wedding video is on VHS. <laughs> we need to have it converted over to DVD. But every year on our anniversary, we get out the video when we watch it. So our kids are very familiar with our, um, with our wedding and uh, with the songs. And so this is, this is very special to us. Another piece that she has done, um, this is a, this is not a free pattern. I think uh, she bought this from Joyful Expressions. Um, this is, his name is Jesus. And here is the pattern itself. Joyful Expressions. Dot us. And she has all kinds of Bible verse um, designs that you can um, buy from her. And Emily printed out the pattern, and I don't want to show this too much, but she said it came in four different parts. And so she actually printed it out and then um, taped them together so that she had the whole pattern as one um, big sheet. And then let me show you. This again is done on Ada. She has not framed this one yet. Isn't that pretty? All the names of Jesus. So this is done in different blues. So a, more of a royal blue in the middle, 
um, a couple different, I'd say she's got mm, four different blues maybe there. A little one darker, Prince of Peace is a little darker. Just very nice. We need to get this framed. The Ada is um, a cream color. She does very nice work. Then another one that she has, this one is um, a sunset pattern. This is called the Four Seasons. It comes on one big chart, it has all four of them. Uh, four Seasons Quilts is the name of it, in a sunset pattern. Now Emily had done this, um, wow, maybe junior, senior in high school, and she entered in in our county fair. And so this is actually, this is four pieces, but when she did these, she had them on mat boards like this, and then she had them in one frame. So it was a big frame with four openings, and she had the Four Seasons um, in those four, and she won, um, she won grand champion at the state, at the county fair, and I can't remember if this is one of her projects that went to the state fair or not. She would have to tell me that. But let me show you all, let me start with, we'll start in order. So this is the spring one. And Emily's not a quilter, um, but she knows that I love quilting. <laughs> and so a lot of the patterns we have around the house have quilting in that. So there's the spring one, and then, Summer is a basket, red, white, and blue. And these are uh, four by six, um, maybe five by seven frames, four by six openings there. And then fall, again, a pumpkin, love the quilt. And then Christmas. Really cute little train set down there. So she's wanting, she took it out of that frame that she did for the fair. She wants to do them all in a row. So we may have to have it custom quilt or custom uh, framed because she wants them in a, in a row, spring, summer, fall, winter that way instead of the four square like that. Doesn't she do a nice job? All right, two more of her projects. This next one comes from a book by Stony Creek, Words to Live By. And I don't know whether these are still available books or not. Um, I'm sure if you look hard enough, somebody still has it somewhere. I was trying to see if there was a... Um, 2010 is the um, copyright date. So this one she did, the Relax. Love the birdhouse, really cute. She says she's wanting to start, the next one she's wanting to do is um, forgive, forgive, this one right here. She just needs to pick up some DMCs, which I told her I probably have them in my stash. But um, And again, this is on Ada, what I would assume is kind of like an oatmeal color. Really pretty. Then the last one is uh, Five Seasons of Quilts. And she has made the Christmas one. Here it is on the back. Now she told me that her piece of um, fabric was, wasn't big enough to do all five of the quilts. So she condensed it down and did three. So she, let me see. She did the presents in the middle and I'll show you here this, this in just a second. And she did um, one, two, she did the three in the middle. She did not do the two on the outside, but then she added the uh, she just pulled the lamp post in here and let me show you her finish on this one love the bright colors on this one this one's really pretty too the detail on the quilt um, the scalloped edges on that quilt she did a nice job moving the lamp post in for the three quilts it looks very cute i even love the um uh, the clothes pins what look like clothespins holding it on there. Really pretty. So I told her we need to get these things framed and done because uh, she has some really, really nice work. 
So that's cross stitch. Now, you see these little things behind me here? I didn't want to, um, I told you I had three daughters. So one is married out of the house. Then Emily is a school teacher, um, works full time as a school teacher and still lives at home. And our third daughter is a barista and she still lives at home as well. She doesn't do a whole lot of cross stitch, but what she does is crochet. And I want to show you some of her crochet work. You will be astounded. Crochet is something I have, uh, I was gonna say I've never done. I might've done a little bit, but it's not something that I do. Um, Maggie knits and crochets and her crocheting is absolutely gorgeous. So let me grab these projects so I can show you what her work is. All right, Maggie's work is very intricate. Now Maggie can do, um, She's made many crocheted blankets, knitted blankets. She has yarn and that's been given to her and she'll just put it together different colors and she's very incredible. But um, her neatest work are the doilies that she makes. This one is, she has mounted on a little um, cork board. But this is Maggie's work. I could not even attempt, could not even attempt absolutely beautiful and Maggie can she'll read a pattern um, but a lot of times once she gets started she is just goes I mean she can be sitting in front of the TV watching a movie and doing this without even hardly looking at her hands I just the detail is absolutely beautiful so this one is probably eight inch circle uh, something like that. Let me show you. I have another. So this is very fine, um, very fine um, thread. This one, the next one I have, a little thicker um, thread. Look at the detail in that. Absolutely incredible. She's made many of these doilies. She made some for um, my daughter that uh, just got married last year. She's made some for her house for her. And um, these we have draped over off of a shelf. Um, we don't have a fireplace, but it, we have this big beam that's in our living room. And this um, we have draped down with some spring flowers um, on it as well. I don't use these on the kitchen table because I do not want to get anything on them. So they're more for decoration in uh, safe parts of the house. Very pretty and just incredible. Actually, so one year, I bet she still has that. One year for the state fair, she actually crocheted a dress in this type of the very fine um, thread, crocheted the entire, entire dress. It was absolutely beautiful. And um, let me show you something else she's been working on. So um, we have some friends that live up in Minnesota and Somehow the joke began that there are um, uh, four of them, three of our kids that have all, that have, we have more kids than that, but the three that, um, that are good friends with the four that are up there, they started calling, they, they all sing. And so they started calling themselves the seven singing dwarves. And so it's become this big joke. They'd have t-shirts that all match. Well, Maggie decided to make crocheted um, dwarves, one for each one. And I just have to show you these. All right, so I'm gonna try to get them the right names with the right ones. But this is Doc. So Maggie said this is a free pattern on Pinterest and I will link it down below. Uh, that Maggie looks, I don't know how much she actually just looked at a picture. She can do that. She can look at a picture and, and crochet from it. Um, or whether this actually had the dimensions and everything, I don't know, but look at his beard. Isn't that adorable? And his glasses, so cute. Now the eyes, they are little felt pieces that she has uh, tacked onto there, but everything else is crocheted and then stuffed. So that's Doc, let me see who else. Um, this one is Sneezy, Sneezy has a big nose. Then this one is Grumpy tell by his eyebrows and he's got a little longer of a beard and the beard is even crocheted crocheted little I mean they look like popcorn balls I don't know how to do that that's all oh, each hat is crocheted and then tacked on top of his head the little body <laughs> then let me see who else um, this one is sleepy 
And she do a good job with the eyebrows even of making it and the droopy eyes. So he's got a beard too and his little hat. That one's sleepy. Then we have Bashful. Mm -hmm. And she even put little rouge on their cheeks for Bashful. And then we have, this one is Happy. Aren't they adorable? And last one, little dopey. <laughs> His little ears. Yeah, it is so cute. So cute. So she made the whole seven drawers. I can't hold them all up at once. But uh, aren't they cute? I don't know if she's going to keep them all together. She's going to pass out each one to them. But, um, but just so cute. So very talented children. I am so proud of all the work that they, they can do as well. And I used to get frustrated when my kids didn't like the same things that I did. And then I realized we can get so much more done when I'm quilting, she's crocheting, another one's baking, another one's gardening. We get so much more done that way, especially when we had the pumpkin patch. Um, Maggie would crochet things. She would do um, baby blankets and she would do um, scarves when, when crocheted scarves were in and, and girls were wearing those. Um, she did other little stuffed animals for kids. I mean, she did, she did hats. She did pumpkin hats and apple hats. She did, um, oh, she did Paw Patrol hats. I mean, all different things. So I finally realized I didn't need to be upset that uh, we can divide and conquer and get a whole lot more done and our, our interests overlap a little bit, um, but we enjoy each working on price. So in an evening, I can be cross-stitching um, Maggie can be crocheting, Emily can be working on something else, but we're all right there together. And it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, this floss tube number three. I'll try not to make it so long until the next time. Um, if you'd like to join me back next week, I'll be back with another quilting video where I'm showing my long arm finishes. And I have a lot going on, a lot of them, a lot of uh, new clients coming through the mail. And so if you have a, um, a quilt that you would like to get to me, you can visit my website at TammyErnestQuilting.com. You can find all the information there on how you can get your quilt to me. And other than that, um, I hope you have a wonderful week and enjoy. Hopefully it's getting warmer in your neck of the woods. I know some of you have messaged me and say, not here. It's not warm here yet, but I hope it's coming and uh, that you're able to get outside and in enjoy the weather and enjoy your family. And uh, thanks so much for stopping by and visiting me today, and I will see you next week.